Mike Daisy, monologist, you went to China to look at the conditions in which workers are producing products for Apple. Mm -hmm. Why did you go and what did you see? I went because I've been an Apple fan my entire life and I love the devices. I actually take my uh, MacBook Pro, Pro apart and put it back together again after cleaning it with compressed air to relax. Like that's what I do after shows sometimes. <laughs> So I'm that kind of a geek, you know, and like one day I was reading a tech news site, a gossip news, you know, a gossip about technology, and I read an article about someone who had gotten their iPhone and the iPhone wasn't blank when they got it. It still had the firmware from the factory and it actually had photos on the camera roll from when the phone had been tested and they put the pictures up online and I looked at the pictures and I had a very transformative experience looking at these very simple pictures. You know, they're just testing the camera. So they just click it a couple of times just to make sure the camera works. So they're not pictures of anything, but I saw these people in the pictures and I realized, even though I'm totally obsessed with my devices to an embarrassing degree, I'd never actually thought ever about where they had come from, the, the circumstance. I never thought in a systematic way. I thought in a vague way. I was like, China. I'd never actually thought about it. And that combined with starting to think more. I thought about how if this phone has four pictures taken by hand, then every iPhone has four pictures on it taken by hand before it is raised. All the tens of millions of them. And that started me down a road of thinking about how are these things actually made? How does, how does it actually work? And that's what brought me to Shenzhen. And what happened when you went? Well, it was shocking. I mean, I'm not a very naive person, and I read and studied a great deal before I went. I expected labor conditions to be harsh and hard. I expected things to be close to the bone. What I didn't expect was the gratuitous level of inhumanization. I didn't expect things to be so unnecessarily cruel. I spoke to people. Uh, I spoke to many people who have medical injuries and mauled hands. Um, mauled in machinery at these factories making not just Apple devices, but um, uh, Nokia, uh, Lenovo, everyone makes their technology the same way at these plants. People mauled, uh, you're talking about companies that are so huge. Uh, the Foxconn plant in Shenzhen has 430,000 workers. There's no reason there could not be medical attention for these people, yet I routinely met people who were maimed and their hands had uh, uh, healed into uh, shapes where they, they, they can no longer use them because they are machines to the factory. And once they're damaged, they're simply parts that are to be disposed of. How angry were those workers? It varied. Some were angry, but some were just resigned because this is the shape of the world. They were resigned in some sense the same way I imagine people watching this might feel resigned, where people would say, what are we supposed to do? This is the way it is, it's China. At the same time, 30 years ago, Shenzhen was a fishing village with 700 people. Things do not have to be the way they are today, they change because we allow them to change. Corporate leaders chose to go to Shenzhen to participate with a fascist country run by thugs. They chose that, is we that choose it. Is that Steve Jobs? Because uh, he's the man who runs Apple. Well, yes. And so it is with everyone in technology. And they would probably say the same thing the rest of them would say. They would all say, what choice do we have? Our hands were tied. Our competitors were going there. What else could we do? And I think people should ask themselves, would they have said the same thing if slave labor became available and their competitors were using that? Would they say the same thing if there were camps, people were interned in, and those people were forced to make things? Would they actually say, we have to go? They have a competitive edge. I mean, is there actually a point at which any of our corporations are accountable, or is it always permissible for us to say, this makes the most business sense, obviously they should do it, however they've done it, whatever makes things the cheapest is always the best, as long as we don't see the consequences. What do you think? I think that there's a great responsibility that when you export your jobs around the world, you should be exporting your values 
with your jobs. And if you do not, if you do not do that simple thing, the simple human thing, then you've committed a grave injustice, a very deep sin against humanity itself. I think it's a terrible, terrible thing.